Hi, welcome to church. It's great to welcome you to church this morning from our home to your home. My name is Kenya and I'm part of the team here at Riverside Vineyard. It's so good to gather together this morning. I just want to share a couple of things that might help you this morning. First thing, make yourself comfortable. Why don't you grab something to drink? Second, Please switch off any other screens. Come away from any distraction now. Now it's time to connect with God and with one another. If you're joining us live on the right high side of the screen, you can chat with people. Just say hello. Let us know where you are. Share something that has happened to you. Let's connect with one another. And if you value prayer, you can also ask prayer. And at the end of the service, we can meet you online and pray for you. Maybe after the service, you can catch up with a friend or someone from your small group over virtual coffee. Let us take this opportunity to pray for one another and encourage one another. Before we go into worship, I'd love us to read a couple of verses from scripture. This is found in John chapter 20, verses 19 to 22. This is the day Jesus raised from the dead. And we find the disciples in a very, it feels they are in a very similar situation to us. They were locked behind closed doors. They were fearful and they didn't know what to do. They were feeling a bit anxious and hopeless. And the Bible says, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. As I think about that, I find it fascinating that Jesus, he didn't knock on the door. He simply appeared in the middle of the room. He meets the disciple in their fear and greets them with his peace. I truly believe that in the same way Jesus wants today to break into places where there is fear in our lives and he wants to fill us with his peace. Just join me in prayer now. Let us look at the eyes of our Savior. He is our Prince of Peace. And He is here this morning to bless each one of us. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. I pray this morning, Jesus, open my eyes to see you alive, present and powerful today. Please, Holy Spirit, come and fill my thoughts, my words, my emotions, my feelings with your hope and peace this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. i mm-hmm. 
of deliverance from my enemies till my fears are gone. I no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. Oh, I no longer. chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into your family the blood flows through my veins and I no longer I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We love your presence. We love your presence, Lord. Thank you that you are with us every day of our lives. Like you promised in your word that you would never leave us or forsake us. You are present with us. You are Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you, Jesus, for your love. Because your perfect love casts out every fear from our hearts. So we pray that you help us, Lord, to immerse ourselves in your love and in your presence as we navigate life in lockdown. Help us to connect with you on a daily basis. Help us to encounter with the resurrected Jesus and receive his peace every day of our lives. We ask you, in Jesus' name, amen. Now is the time for offering. It's an opportunity for you to give to God and to this church. As you know, we've been helping our communities, especially with storehouse. We have been able to help the most vulnerable youth, kids in our communities. So we'd love to continue to be a generous family in this hour. So now is the time to give your offering. Many give by standing order or by bank transfer. This is our favorite way. Thank you for that. If you're giving those ways, please remember your giving now. If you normally give through offering buckets, now is the time. If you're joining us live, a button will pop up in the chat session. You can click on it and that will take you to our giving page. Otherwise, you can go directly there from the front page of our website. If you are a UK taxpayer, please tick that box so we can claim back tax at no cost to you. So your gift will be increased at 25 by 25%. Let's just pray now. Father God, thank you for the opportunity we have to sow in your kingdom. We know that all things come from you and you are our great provider. It is such a privilege to give back to you, Lord. So now I pray, use what we give this morning to extend your kingdom and bless the work of your church on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I will hand over to Rob now. Kenya, thank you so much. Um, and Ash and Zizi too, thank you so much for leading us in worship today. Um, it's great to have you with us uh, wherever you find yourself today. Um, my name is Rob and I'm part of the team here at Riverside Vineyard. Um, I just wanted to tell you a couple of things about how you can navigate through the uh, online options um, as, you, as you're with us today. Um, so if you're on a laptop or tablet, um, the best way to connect with us is, is through, the, through the buttons on the, on the top there. Um, you will see those and they'll click through to certain different places as we talk about them. Feel free just to click on those sections there. Um, and you'll also see the option for, for live prayer as well. And just want to encourage you to engage with that at the end of the service after Andy's talk. Um, if you're on a mobile device, you may have to kind of delve a little bit deeper. Um, so there may be three little dots. If you click on those, um, you'll see a whole bunch more options come up for you. Um, and you can see all those things that we're talking about. Um, if you're on catch up, so maybe you're watching on YouTube. Um, firstly, so good to have you with us. Um, and I just want to encourage you uh, to, to find the links in, in the text at the bottom there, or you can head directly to riversidevineyard.com and there are a whole bunch of options there that we can point you towards as well. Now, um, if you have never connected with us before, we'd love you um, to connect with us. Normally, I'd be holding up a, a, a connect card here. Um, you're going to have to find that online today, I'm afraid. Um, but you can do that. It should pop up in the chat section there. Or you can go to riversidevineyard.com slash connect. Um, and for the first time today, we're running an online newcomers lounge. Um, hopefully, the Zoom uh, link will go up. 
um, in the chat section though for those of you that are watching live um, Andy and Bethan will be on there we'd love to get to know you and connect with you a little bit more and help you to to find out a little bit more about how you can be a part of something here um, and also if you're exploring faith um, we'd love you to, to download free of charge um, the, the Why Jesus booklet. This is a great um, little booklet that just helps you unpack who Jesus is and why we think he's so important. So if you go to riversidevineyard.com slash why dash Jesus, you will find the details there. Now, I just want to tell you about a few things that are coming up. We're going to share a couple of stories in this section as well. Um, and actually, the first thing we want to share is a story. Um, and this is from Andy, um, and he's going to share you a story right now. Hi, guys. Andy Black here. I just want to share a quick story of encouragement with you all. A week or so back, our son was reading Pete Gregg's book, How to Pray. Pete writes about how we should be specific when we pray, asking the Lord for what it is we would love to see him do. Afterwards, my son wandered out into his garden and happened to see a mate of mine walk past his gate with his dog. He was prompted to pray that my friend would connect with God through his relationship with me. Well, the next day, having not spoken with my friend for possibly a couple of months, he called me out of the blue and we ended up on the phone for the best part of an hour, speaking mostly about God. It ended up with me suggesting that he tuned into our Sunday service online. And he did this and after the talk responded to the prayer of commitment. He pressed the raise a hand button and then he entered the prayer space and connected with one of the team, which I know he found to be a great blessing. He couldn't have known what Jake prayed or the specific nature of the request in it. But when I shared that with him, it just blew him away. Isn't that fantastic? Just such a great answer to prayer, such a great opportunity for this guy to just connect uh, back with God and with, with the church as well. Um, and so, yeah, Andy, thank you for sharing that with us. And I just want to encourage you to be thinking of who you can be inviting along. Um, it's so much easier to pop along and uh, sit in the back row of church when you're in, still in your front room. So this is a great opportunity for, for people just to explore something of the hope and, the, and, the, and everything that we have. So, yeah, thank you so much. Um, the second thing I want to tell you about is Storehouse. Um, firstly, thank you so much uh, to all of those that put their hands up and said, yeah, I'm up for being a drop off point. Um, so if, you, if you've done that, thank you. We're still looking for a few more people. Um, so particularly if you're in the Staines area, do just email Hannah um, at riversidevineyard.com um, and just let her know that you'd be up for doing that. If you're looking for places to drop food off, we now have um, an online page from the storehouse website, riversidevineyard.com slash storehouse, and you can find the closest drop off point to you. So hopefully you can walk somewhere um, and drop some items off as part of your daily exercise. We'd love you to be a part of that. And the storehouse team are just doing incredibly well. And, and thank you so much to all of those who are volunteering, who are delivering items. It's just been amazing to see this turn around so quickly. Now, um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is small groups. Um, we're going to hear from Jana, who's going to tell you a little bit about how um, their group are getting on at this time. Hey everyone, it's Jana here. Um, those that don't know me, I currently help lead the Young Adult Small Group with Cameron. Um, we just wanted to give you guys a quick update about how our small group has been doing during this current situation that we all find ourselves in. Um, so we've been continuing to meet via Zoom every Friday night um, and it's actually been surprisingly a real blessing in disguise. Um, as young adults, I think a lot of us really struggle with social anxiety um, and so meeting on Zoom has actually turned out perfect. Um, those that struggle with, the, with that type of situation um, has really, it's been amazing to witness, they've really come out of their shell um, and they've just really blossomed and been able to grow their faith deeper, um, which has been incredible. Uh, the second thing is that our home group has really been able to pull together during this time. We've had quite a couple of people that have had to self-isolate, myself included, um, and 
people have just generously dropped off shopping um, and prescriptions. My prescription was dropped outside of my house. Um, and then uh, it was amazing. We, could, we even had a, a conversation outside the window. Um, so it's just been really amazing to witness our small group in particular um, turn the negative into such an amazing positive um, and it's been a real blessing for us so if you're not in a small group I really recommend it um, and if you're a young adult looking for a small group the door is always open. Jana thank you so much for sharing that with us if you're a young adult and uh, you're looking to get connected in with a group can I suggest you connect in with these guys Jana and Cameron are doing a great job they've been leading through Everyday Supernatural the series we had just prior to Easter um, and um, it's been great to see how they, they're getting on and looking out for one another. Um, and if you are not part of a small group already, you can go to riversidevineyard.com slash small groups. It's just so important we stay connected at this time. Excellent. So um, the last thing I want to tell you about is um, is we, we are going to be praying uh, for 24 hours over the um, starting at 7 p.m. tonight. We want to invite you to join us at 7 p.m. Um, there is a, a link to a Zoom call. We'd love you to all to be uh, joining in with us on that. So that's in the weekly email. Um, and then we'd love to invite you to sign up for one hour. Um, and again, the link is in your email. But we're going to be praying through the next 24 hours uh, as we seek God during this during this time together. So do sign up for that. Do be a part of that um, with one another as well. Now I'm going to hand over to Andy, who's going to give us our talk this morning. Andy is our senior pastor, um, and uh, do just you know just just make sure you're focusing in on what what he's got to share with us today as we start a new series. Um, um, yeah, so so over to Andy. Hi everyone, great to connect again today from our home to yours. Uh, last Sunday, Easter Sunday was amazing. Hugely proud of the worship team who put in hours and hours and days of effort uh, to serve us uh, just so amazingly. Uh, if you missed it, you can catch up online, um, either via the church website or on our YouTube channel. In fact, you can catch the other services there as well. The times that we're living in are new territory for all of us. I don't know about you, but I've never lived in a global pandemic before. I don't suppose you have either. It's new territory. Um, and in new territory, we have to learn to navigate well. So that's our new series that we're kicking off today, Navigating Life Well. I'm going to share the teaching of this series with Bethan, with Kenya, with Rob and with Hannington. Really looking forward to this series. We're going to think about how we can navigate uh, through bad news, through anger, through feeling low and depressed, through grief and loss. Um, so love you. invite friends and family uh, to come and join you. Um, today we're going to think about how we can navigate worry. If you're connecting with us and you're not yet a follower of Jesus, I'm delighted that you are and I hope that what we share is, is helpful to you today. Now I couldn't find any surveys on how many people have, have experienced anxiety or worry due to COVID-19. I suspect that's because the answer would be 100%. Maybe in the safety of your own home, raise a hand if you've had at least one anxious thought or worry in the last month. Now I can't see you but I'm assuming that every hand is raised or you're lying, uh, or maybe you haven't got a pulse anymore, so maybe just check that you've got a pulse. When this crisis was starting to ramp up in mid-March, Bethan and I were down in Wales. Um, our kids were in Bristol and Nottingham, and that was a concern. Are they okay there? Do we need to get them home? And if so, how? How many of you have done this? You've coughed once and then thought, I'm going to die. Anyone else? Is it just me or any of the other symptoms? Our minds can just start racing away. My dad is in his 80s. He has underlying health conditions. He's got some breathlessness. He lives in a complex of assisted living flats where everyone is over 70. That's a worry for us. Maybe for you, you've lost a job or your job's at risk or you've been furloughed or maybe you run a business and business is running dry. I could go on and on and on. Our world is full of anxiety and worry. How can we navigate worry well? If you have a Bible, could you turn with me to Luke chapter 12? 
I'm going to set the scene by reading uh, verse 1, um, where you find this. Meanwhile, uh, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples. So there's this crowd of thousands of people. Now, many in that kind of crowd would have been what we would call the working poor. Farmers, fishermen, not well-off people listening to Jesus. But there is at least one rich guy as part of the crowd, and he talks to Jesus, and you find that in verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And then what Jesus does is he tells a parable um, about you know, the foolishness of just storing stuff up for ourselves before he then turns back, if you like, to the everyday, the, the working poor, ordinary people. And this is the main bulk of the scripture that we'll read today from verse 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. One of the things that Jesus is saying is that both wealthy and poor are mistaken regarding the source of their worry. We believe that the source of our worry is outside of ourselves. So the stock market has fallen 20% and that has lots of impacts, including on pensions. Maybe we're worried about our job or our business. Maybe we're worried that, you know, I might get coronavirus and I already have some underlying health issues. And what I think Jesus would say to us is that we have misunderstood the source of our worry. Worry does not come from stuff happening around us, but it comes from something inside of us. So to the wealthy man in verse 15, Jesus says, be on your guard against greed inside. To the poor farmers and the fishermen, to the crowd in verses 22, 29 and 32, he says, do not worry, do not worry, do not be afraid. The source of our worry is not coronavirus or the stock market or politicians or anything and outside of us. Worry comes from inside of us. Now, you may be saying, Andy, thanks a lot for that. And that was my initial reaction when I read this story. You know, thanks so much, Jesus. You know, people are facing all sorts of major threats to their finances, to their jobs, to their health, and you pile the blame on us for worrying. You know, Jesus, talk about blaming blaming the victim. But as we think about this more deeply, Jesus' words are actually full of hope and good news. And I believe that they are really encouraging because here's the deal. 
We cannot control things happening outside of us. We think we can, but actually we can't. We have no power over the stock exchange, the banks, the politicians or a virus. But we can make choices about what goes on in our hearts. And we don't have to react like everyone else. Anxiety and worry are catching. We don't have to react in the same way. Now, Jesus is not saying, just think positively, chaps. You know, glass half full rather than half empty. Or you know the little phrase, you know, when life hands you a lemon, squeeze it and make lemonade. Uh, he's not saying, you know, if you're worried, just do some mental gymnastics and you'll be okay. He's not saying that. There are some practical things that we can do. If you're prone to worry, don't watch the news 24 seven. Don't Google health websites. They're not gonna help you. We need way more than some strategies in order to navigate worry. So what is the Christian response to worry? I think that Jesus would say to us, that we need to answer three who questions correctly. Three who questions. The first who question is this. Who is telling us not to worry? Well, the person that's telling us that is Jesus. And he lived anything but an easy, carefree life. You know, Jesus once said about himself, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the son of man himself has nowhere to lay his head. He had no home. He was reliant on others for subsistence, for food and shelter. He knew he was facing death. Look back at Luke chapter nine. He knew where his life was headed. And still he says, do not worry. So who is telling us not to worry? It's Jesus. And the second who question, who is in control? Let me read again verses 25 and 26. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest. At the heart of worry is an attempt to control the uncontrollable. As I've said, most of us live under the illusion that we think we're in control. You know, if I just stock up enough toilet paper, enough paracetamol, then I'll be okay. We think we're in control, but actually we're not. And Jesus reminds us that we can't even add one hour to our lives. We can't even add one inch to our height. You know, if I could do that, I would have done so so that I could at least be the same height as my son. But I can't do that. You can't do that. And then Jesus goes on to talk about wildflowers, the lilies of the field. Verse 27, consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. So think about a field of wildflowers, wild lilies, beautiful, but so little control. They didn't choose which field they grew in. For us, we don't choose where we, where we were born, when we were born, who we were born to. A lily has no control what grows around it. Neither do we. Our families, friends, siblings, classmates, no control. Lily has no control on the weather or its environment. Neither do we. A lily has no control on its color. Neither do we. I'm the color I am. You are the color that you are. Only God is in control of everything. And my question this morning to you is, do you believe that? Do you believe that God is good and that ultimately he will work everything together for your good? If we truly believe that God is in control and rules over everything, friends, what do we have to worry about? Now, I'm gonna fess up here. I have a long way to go on this one on my own. I am prone from times to worry, but that does not mean that what I've just said is not true. 
It just means that I have a long way to go. God rules over viruses. He rules over governments, over banks. He rules over your boss, over your family, over your friends. God rules over our bodies, over every cell in our bodies, over every fiber. God rules over Satan. He rules over life and over death. God rules over everything. If we were together right now, I'd really be hoping there'd be a loud amen in the room. God is in control. So the question of who is in control, God is. He is in control. And finally, the third who question, who am I? Who are you? It's a question of identity. Let me read verse 27 again. Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Now, Jesus is not talking about flowers that are neatly tended, like the rose in Kew Gardens or in Wisley. You know, the, these are flowers that were just growing by the roadside. No one looking after them except God. God watered them, tended them. God was the one that would make them outshine even Solomon, one of the richest and wisest kings ever. And then Jesus says this, verse 28, if that is how God clothes the, gra clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? How much more will he look after us? Why? Because he loves us. At the heart of worry is a question of identity. Who am I? Who are you? See, in the depth of my heart, do I know that God loves me and that I am a beloved child of God? Do I know that deep down in my heart? Do I know and trust that his love is enough to look after my life now and in the life to come. Now, I am not saying that it is easy to navigate anxiety and worry in what is a very anxious world. But I do believe that these three who questions will help us. Who is telling us not to worry? It's Jesus. Who is in control of the uncontrollable? God is. Who am I? If we've said yes to Jesus, we are dearly beloved children of God. And I believe that it is on this foundation, with these realities being taken into our lives, that we are able to navigate life well, that we can not worry. Now, you've been maybe with us today and you've not yet said yes to Jesus. If you want to navigate worry, that's the best thing I can invite you to do today, to give your yes to Jesus. Simply to say, I'm going to stop trying to navigate life on my own. Jesus, I recognize that you love me, that you care for me. And so, Jesus, I open my heart to you and give my yes to you. If that's a decision you're making today, and you're watching on the live stream, I'd love you to indicate that decision through simply clicking on a button that's going to appear in the chat section, chat section that says raise a hand, simply so that you acknowledge this step that you are taking today, that it is real for you, that it's really happening. We'd then love to connect with you, to encourage you. So you can just jump into the prayer space, click the prayer button. Um, if you're watching this on catch up, you can still take this same step. And why don't you just email me, andy at riversidevineyard.com, because I would love just to connect with you uh, and to help you take next steps in following Jesus. But for all of us right now, why don't we just pray together as we respond to what Jesus is saying to us? We need God's help to navigate worry. So if you're comfortable, why don't you open your hands? I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit to come and then we'll wait. Um, and opening our hands simply postures ourselves to say, I need help. Um, and we're saying to Jesus, would you please 
pour your help into my life now by your Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, come. We invite you to breathe upon us, to release the power and the presence of God's kingdom into our lives right now. Holy Spirit, come. We wait for you. We need you. We love you. We acknowledge you. We acknowledge your presence. We love your presence. Come and fill us afresh right now. And Jesus, thank you that you're the one who says to us, do not worry. And so, Jesus, I ask that you speak to us right now. Maybe just where you are right now, you bring a worry or two or three. Just, just name them in your heart to Jesus right now. It might be your finances. It might be your health. It might be your family that you're worrying about. Bring those worries to Jesus. And would you allow him to speak to you right now? To speak into that worry to be present with you in that concern. And I believe there's an invitation that the Lord is bringing to us today to give up, to con to give up control, to let it go. And you, you may just be helped right now actually to turn your hands over, to, to let it go, to not hold on to those things, to not hold on to um, at the, what we think we can do to be in control of our finances, to be in control of our health, our career, our businesses, our jobs, even fulfilling our own dreams, our own hopes, that we would let those things go. We let them go. We cannot control them even if we think that we can. And then we turn our hands over and say, Jesus, I need your help. Holy Spirit, breathe help into my life right now. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would release the love of God deep into our lives right now. The depth and the height and the width and the richness of your love, would you release that to us now in Jesus' name? Now, this is the point in our service where we'd normally invite people to come on forward who are reaching out to the Lord, who would love some prayer. Uh, if you'd like people to pray for you, maybe some of the things we've shared, maybe you have other needs, you're, you're, you're sick in some way, your body hurts, we would love to pray. You can simply click on the prayer button right now uh, and there are people waiting uh, there that would love to pray for you. For many of us, responding in worship is just a wonderful thing right now. And the team will lead us in a song, uh, which we would love you just to be a part of. And after that, please just hang around. You can chat with one another, grab a coffee. Uh, you might want to jump, jump onto a chat with some friends or your small group to pray together. But God bless you. Uh, have a great week uh, and we'll see you next weekend.
rain.